Shalom. Here's a great excerpt from Joel Young for his Glorious Ministry. Just a little bit of what he had to say yesterday. Then on. And what happens if you get through this whole world and it looks like you fooled everybody? Then you get to stand before God. Well, that's going to really work out. I had that with a brother years ago who decided that he wasn't going to believe in God. And then one day if he stood before God, that he would be able to explain his non-belief to God. I said, really? You want, you want to roll those dice? That's what you want to go to heaven with. Stand before God and go, I didn't believe in you all along, but now that I see who you are, let me give you the reasons why I didn't believe in you on earth. You're going to talk to perfect wisdom, perfect intelligence, all-knowing God, and you're going to have a case that God's going to go, who knew? Sounds like a good story, right? <laughs> well, once you take the bunk over there, you know, and an angel will rub you down. It ain't working. How do you know that? In Revelation 20, 11 to 15, you got the heavens and earth fleeing away, great white throne judgment. Everybody's books are opened. Whose books are those? Non-believers. All their deeds, their whole life tracked and written. Even your brain holds a neural memory of everything you ever said, did, and thought. It's easy to pull out the brain extract, look at that, put it up on there, and just get the whole thing right there, just as far as one of the ways. And so it says all their deeds, all their books are open, and not one of them is found to be worthy. A test question to ask a non-believer is to say, have you kept your own moral standards and sense of right and wrong in your life perfectly? No, I didn't say God's yet. I don't even know, they didn't know who God is yet. Have you kept? They asked that to a kid about, should God let you into heaven? And he says, well, you know, I think, I, you know, I've, been, I've been good um, um, most of the time. People trip up. They don't have to, but it takes some work to work this stuff out. Why don't you work it with the one who already knows everything, has nothing but your best in mind, knows all your potentials and all for, for failure and for success, and is gonna back you. How do I know that? I'll give you one verse to prove it, although you can find the whole thousands of them. Deuteronomy 30, 19. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. I set before you, and Hebrew has definite articles, the blessing and the curse. The blessing and the curse. The life and the death. Choose. Now, in case you're having a hard time, I don't know if I want all the blessings of God or I want the curses. Too many questions here. Why is it so hard? Or the life or the death. I don't know. I got another question. It's too much to, for me to bear. Then God says, all right, the next part of the verse goes, I know you're having a hard time. Choose the life. And then it tells you why. So you can stay alive. Because your life gets real bad if you're not alive. I mean, nothing makes sense if you're not alive. They die. Amen. So the first requirement to get anything done is being alive. And it sounds funny, but there are people who roll the dice with their life and make it very cheap. Mm-hmm. And sometimes when they go, oops, they don't always wake up. Car accident, overdose, take their own life. On and on. Don't count on a second chance. Although there are second chances. I remember someone told me a story about... Uh, I think that's enough. What a blessing this brother is. Shalom and much love.